Welcome to the channel. So today we're going to be installing a backup camera using the factory MyLink radio in a 2011 Jeep Compass. Now this process is going to be near identical for a Jeep Patriot and some of the things will be similar for a Jeep Wrangler, believe it or not. So Prudence, oh geez. Prudence, are you ready to install it? Gonna need your help. All right, let's get started. So before we get to the install, I wanted to talk briefly about the current camera system because I did install one a few years ago and what I installed was a basic universal wireless camera system, this one being from Peak. It's been a great unit. I do have the part number that I will put in the link down below or the description. It's been a great unit. but it's kind of annoying. So the benefits to a universal system is obviously it works for a majority of vehicles. And as long as you have a cigarette lighter for power, then this portion up front is all you need to install. But on the back, the most important portion of the backup camera is clearly the camera itself. So the peak unit, it's pretty nice because it has these infrared uh, guys on the side makes it easier for backing up in the night, doesn't take much lighting for it to kick on and be able to see a pretty clear image. The only problem is now, after a couple years, these have gone bad or something internally with this. And this is actually the second unit that we've replaced. We had an earlier model that you just couldn't really see at all at night. But this is the second unit. Unfortunately, it has failed. Um, the camera system does work. It's just at night, it's very difficult. And also it's very bulky and it weighs down the whole license plate bracket here. But as far as install, it's actually very simple to install, and this is the process that we'll use for disassembling this one and installing the new one. But basically, you take off this panel, you route the wires through inside here, all the way down, down one of these sides, in through here, and it's near impossible to get the wires through this original coupler, so kind of just looped it around down through that grommet in through here to the taillight and that's the beauty of the system it's very simple to install the universal systems and you pretty much just tap into the reverse signal and then that's how the system works it's nice quick easy and cheap but it's not very dependable and it's kind of annoying here's the best and worst part of the universal system you get this easy to install suction mounted kind of like a gps screen but it does create blind spots and in the heat the suction cup gives way and it falls and actually we've had the suction cup itself fail and had to reach out to peak to get a replacement so it is a real cost effective unit very simple to install but we're on to bigger and better things we're going to remove this and then that's why we're getting a camera system that will use the factory radio so let's get started let me show you what i got so the kit i decided to go with was by emerald designs and the reason I chose it was because it was a good cost-effective kit that wasn't like the Mopar brand that was like 300 some dollars and it wasn't like a cheap eBay kit that was like 30 or 40 dollars. This one has a pretty good Sony camera on it and it seemed like a good mid-grade camera with a great customer service I might add. I had a couple questions when I was uh, looking at purchasing this kit and they answered everything I had and even gave me a coupon code so let's dig into the box. So here's the kit. Now I would like to shout out to my sponsor, myself actually, Emerald did not sponsor this. Um, this came straight out of my own pocket and that's why price point and research is very important whenever you're doing a backup camera system like this. So like I mentioned, eBay systems, you can have them for $30 to $40 or heck you can even piecemeal them all together. You can buy the cable separate, the camera separate, and you might be able to save some money that way but I think in my opinion this is the best solution to go with because it's the most cost-effective way and it seems like the most well-built kit for the price. Another point of mention when installing a backup camera system on a newer Jeep like the one done in this video is the fact that it's actually a two-part process. Now what I mean by that is installation of the actual hardware, the backup camera system, that's going to be the first part and then the second part required if you're using a, a factory radio like the one done with this kit is you have to go to the dealer or somebody that's going to program the proper drivers on the radio to make everything talk together. So you install the hardware whereas the dealer installs the drivers to make things work. Now towards the end of this video I will be discussing this more in depth what the options are 
and what you can do yourself as opposed to going to the dealer and the cost of those options. So let's see what's inside. So there's a lot of wires here. Got the camera and some other things. So you may be wondering, what do I need to install? How do I install it? Well, it's a good thing they have directions that come with it. However, they're not very self-explanatory here. They're not very well laid out in comparison to what you get with the kit. Or is I'm here to help. Oh, and you can't forget that harness wire either. So pretty much how this system works, we'll start with the backup camera itself. This is a nice Sony 170 degree wide shock resistant, water resistant camera. If you're looking for the main specs here, there you go, they're right on the box. That kind of means nothing to me. But as far as build quality, just looking at the camera itself, it does seem very sturdy. Now one thing I did notice online on the eBay kits, a lot of them have the infrared or the LEDs around it, which is nice for night driving. But that's actually what our peak camera has right on the vehicle now, our universal system and that's what failed the little infrared guys around it so you can't see anything at night and supposedly this camera only needs a small speck of light to function at night to see anything so we're we are going to be putting that to the test and I'll let you guys know what I think of that so you pretty much hook up the backup camera you have this intermediate harness that plugs into one another right here real simple nice connector seems waterproof not that this would be outside, it's actually going to be in the hatch, I'll show you. Comes along like this. You have the RCA video cable here, and then you have some wires, a black and a red wire. Then you have, let me undo this real quick. So then you have the extension piece that goes from the backup camera, plugs into here. This is the other end and then this plugs into the radio harness. So there will be a connector on the back of the radio. You'll plug this into it. This will not get plugged into anything, but this is the important part. This gets plugged into that guy. So I'll try to lay this out on the ground and kind of show you a better understanding of it. Simplification purposes, I laid it out on the ground here to try to explain a little bit better what's going on with the wiring. So back here you have the camera, runs to the camera harness, and you have two wires then you have it hooked up to one of the RCA video cables one little red wire here follows along you have all this slack I think it's 10 feet right here they give you and then another end of the RCA video cable one other red wire and then it goes up to the T harness and this is what plugs in to the back of your radio so the beauty of this kit is that you actually only need to hook up two wires out of this system, believe it or not. So, the black wire is a ground, so there's two wires in here. You have a red wire and a black wire. So all you need to do is hook up this black wire to a ground, and that one, when I do the install, I'm gonna keep it somewhere in the back hatch area to simplify things, because there's no sense in running the ground all the way up to the front when you can, in essence, find a ground anywhere. So, this red wire, is going to be hooked up to a 12 volt ignition source. So do not hook it up to the reverse wire. They recommend, well, if you hook it up to the reverse wire, it probably still will work. It just won't be as fast. So the reason you hook it up to a 12 volt ignition source, once you turn on that key, this camera system is basically fired up. It's on standby. And then once you throw the vehicle in reverse, then it kicks on because the radio will do its thing and then it goes to the screen. If you have it on the reverse wire, then once you throw in a reverse, then the camera system has to boot up and then it will show up on the radio. So it's much quicker if you just hook up this red wire to a 12 volt ignition source, which they recommend doing to a cigarette lighter. So what I will be doing is I will only be hooking up this black wire out of this harness right here. Again, there's two wires, black and a red one. The black wire will be hooked to a ground in the back. The red wire I will not touch. Now going up to this red wire, it's the same kind of thing to where this is for the 12 volt. This red wire right here because it's going to be closest to the radio harness in the dash and I will be 
basically going to the cigarette lighter for the ignition source. So the wiring is actually very simple. It looks like a mumble jumble mess here, but I reassure you it's very simple. But the most important thing to note is not be hooking up to the reverse wire. It will be a 12 volt ignition source. So let's get started. Two T27 Torx bits to remove right here at the grab handle and then underneath the speaker area just pull down on the handle it lowers the speakers and then you have four Phillips screws to remove. Now the rest of this you'll need a trim removal tool because it's held in with pressure and clips. The trim removal piece right here, there's a total of nine clips. So you have five on the one side and four on the other. And pretty much what you want to do is just kind of get your fingers in behind here, pull it back, and then get your trim removal tool and pop. And I really wouldn't worry about breaking this stuff. It's very sturdy plastic. Then it actually comes apart in half here on purpose. So just work on one half, work on the other half, and then you'll be good. And then for, as far as the actual big panel that goes under the hatch here there's let's see four five six seven clips and it's the same kind of thing just slowly work your way around and then it'll pop loose and then there's one connector here for the speaker system and then there's a little tab press that guy in there pull down and then that releases and then you can lower and set this thing on the side this is kind of heavy with those speakers and it's very awkward so Maybe best to have a second person helping you. Now there's two 10 millimeter nuts that you'll have to remove here and here. And then there's a couple plastic guys like that one right there that will push together with needle nose pliers. And what that'll do is that'll at least loosen up this panel right here. Because we do have to drill a hole in one of these. And then I'm also mainly removing it because that's how I installed this original peak system. Now that I got this system loose right here, it's not going to remove completely because you do have the latch system mechanism built into here, but that'll at least loosen everything up because I do have the wire going through there. And let's see, so I have it coming through here all the way down around, goes through here, loops out here down through here to the tail light. So that's what we're removing and then that's actually how we're going to be installing the new kit. So clearly, if you don't have a backup camera on here now, you don't have to worry about this step. But the reverse order where we're going to be going from here upwards, you will have to do. So let me cut off some of these zip ties. Remove the existing wire from the tail light. So then we're going to be starting pretty much from a clean slate to install the new kit. Tail light is now removed, and now I gained access to that reverse wire on the existing kit that I installed. And to remove this tail light, it's super simple. 
all you need to do is remove these two plastic push pins in here, pull out the center, and then that'll loosen it up because with that center pulled out, it releases this. It's actually pretty tight, and then once you push this in, it fattens up and that's what sticks in there. So you have to remove the center portion first, and then you just push in on this tab right here, give it some force, pull out, and that taillight removes. And these side panels are held on with the exact same clips as the hatch portion here. Just a couple. So get your trim removal tool in here, pop back, and then same thing with this lower piece. There is another two. There's one clip down here and then one up here. This one is missing the metal portion, so it may have fallen down but I'll take a look in a minute, but there is two clips. And you don't need to take this panel out entirely, just loosen it up uh, for now. So now I just have to undo this wire right here, tape it all back together, put the tail light in, and then we're good. Because again, where I feel like the millionth time, we do not have to tap into the reverse light on this kit. We will be using the ignition 12 volt source up front, the cigarette lighter. So once I remove this old kit right here, that's pretty much the last of it. And then we can start on the install of the new mobile integration system kit. So the peak system is officially uninstalled. Took out the two wires, there's a ground wire and also a 12 volt source that goes to the reverse wire. And then the wires run up to the camera. So now we're good to install the tail light harness back into the tail light. Clips in like such. Let's give it a little force. Install the two plastic clips. lights back in. We'll finish removing this wire. There's the old system. Now we're officially ready to install the new camera system. Now we can get on onto the install of the new camera system. So here's the camera system or the camera itself and what we're going to be doing is on this panel right here on the right side of the license plate light we're going to mount it to this little lens guy and the reason being is because you can't mount it directly in the center because of the handle here to open up the hatch is right there in the center so you kind of have to offset it left or right now i was looking at different vehicles see what they have left right you know, the ones that have to be offset, what's common. And it's weird because a lot of them I saw were on the left side. And I feel like as a driver, when you're coming around the vehicle and you're trying to open up the hatch, you're more likely to hit the camera's mounted right here on your hand. So if it's offset to the passenger side, you're less likely to, you know, hit it and scratch it and whatnot. So that's what I'll end up be doing. So you can choose whether you want on the left or the right. And uh, fortunately, Jeep, they make it easy for you. And uh, the lens cover pops right off little uh, tab here get a screwdriver swings down pop that out so what we're going to be doing is drilling a hole in here to mount the camera i have a 7 30 seconds drill bit that will be for the stud they have a little grommet guy that'll go in there and of course the nuts let's drill the 7 30 seconds hole in the lens first Then up in here, another hole, and then we'll put a grommet in there. Do yourself a favor and use the 730 seconds bit on both. Most important part, does it fit? Yep, the connector fits. So the little grommet thing that they provide is double-sided taped. So the side closest to the camera, I will be mounting permanently. And then this side, um, to the lens I'm gonna to wait to peel off this double sided tape in case after we fire up the camera and have to make any adjustments we can and then I'll come back take this tape off and then we'll fully secure it down. It's 
So now we'll fish it through here, put the washer, lock washer, and then the nut on. To install it's reverse order, but this time you feed the wires through, put those two tabs in, and then swing this closed and it clips in. So for the wires, it was very difficult to get a good camera angle of it, so unfortunately I did not get it. The grommet I still have to fish through, but uh, pretty much how you run the wires, you run it along just like how the license plate light is up in behind here. I put a zip tie in there, clips into there, and it falls in and goes through the grommet just like the two license plate light wires go through right there. So it's actually pretty simple to install, which is real hard to get a good camera angle of it. But you don't want to wire it you know, anywhere along here because it will get hung up because that is the latch mechanism. So now I can re-hook this cable. I just attached it so you can get a better view of it, but you really don't have to. But we'll reattach that, and that's pretty much what it's looking like. It's looking good. So what I ended up just doing right there was taking the ground wire and attaching it to the rear wiper motor area. So there's three 10 millimeter bolts that you can take off. I actually only took off these two so I could swing it down a little bit. And I trimmed back the solid red wire and then the gray wire, or excuse me, the ground wire is attached right here. It's a good grounding point. So you can drill and tap any holes you want. I'm kind of highly against that. I want to use an existing bolt. so I. Uh, stripped back the wire, I looped it, soldered it, created my own eyelet basically, got two washers sandwiched in between, and tightened this all back together. Um, yeah, so now I'm gonna be hooking these two wires up, zip tying them up out of the way, and then now what's left is to take our yellow video RCA cable route it to around here, the extension piece, and run it through the vehicle all the way up to the front. This wire right here next to the other end of the RCA by the back hatch here, this red wire needs to be connected to the camera red wire harness. So it's kind of hard to see and with all these other factory wires and whatnot, but that camera right there 
that the wires run through up in here, there's two wires, one of which is grounded right here to the washer motor assembly, and then the other one I looped and then just had solder on it, not hooked up to anything. But I was wrong. This red wire needs ran to the other end of the RCA cable. So it's pulling power from the cigarette lighter up there, power is traveling through here, and then do 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 goes to the camera harness and voila. So I was in fact wrong and it's something that after I programmed the radio I realized it wasn't working, did a little troubleshooting and realized this was the issue. Hardest part of the install by far is getting this big ol' RCA video cable right here all the way through this guy. So what I recommend doing, get a hole right here in the back. Right there to fish it through. And then same thing on the top portion of the grommet. Don't waste your time trying to feed it through here. Because the sad part is you don't need that big of a hole for the wire, it's just the size of this end. So what I did was I used a screwdriver, stabbed a hole in the side, shoved needle nose pliers through, wind it, stuck the tip of the RCA in it, like such, and pulled it through. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Definitely the hardest part of the install. So the wiring is all wrapped up in the back here. I have the camera installed. Wire going through the license plate light hole there. That that we created. Wraps in through here. Have it grounded to the wiper motor assembly. Have the wires coming through here. Any slack I have coiled up continues on around here. This is where the two RCA ends meet. I have that taped up just to, you know, any vibration they don't separate. And then I have it zip tied all the way down through here. Fishes down inside through there. Goes down through here. Comes through the grommet area where you poke a small hole. Comes through. Poke another hole. Fishes down through there. And now it's accessible inside the vehicle. So now we're going to figure out how we're going to wire or fish this wire all the way from back here to the front. So it's taken some trial and error to figure out how exactly this all disassembles to get the wire through the side here. So pretty much you just lift up on this back panel. There's like a little space right in there that you can once you open it up it lifts out. that to the side then you have access to the spare tire area um, don't mind the giant mess or the dog hair we clearly own a dog so now there is a small panel here you pop off just with a screwdriver right here or I'm sorry it's up here this pops off there's nothing in behind there it's just easier to grab in here but what you will need to remove is there is a hold down here with a Phillips screw and another hold down with another Phillips screw right there. So this is what they look like. One right there and one right there. So remove those two, pop that panel out, this lower piece, and then push back some of this like carpeting and then you can get your hand up underneath here and push up and then same thing with this but push it towards you and then these clips will come out. So you don't have to remove this panel in its entirety. You just have to get it enough to where you can fish this wire down through here, back and around here, down to that door sill area. And this is what the other side looks like. So now we have the wires fishing through here. And if you see the zip ties there, the tails of them, I attach two zip ties, one right there and one 
right down there. That way it stays out of the way of the seatbelt mechanism so nothing gets tangled in there. But outside of that, you really don't need any other zip ties inside of here. But we'll continue to run it through the door sill up to the front of the vehicle. So for ease of install, what I'm doing is actually not removing this door sill and I am shoving the wire in the corner where it meets the carpet and the plastic, taking my trim removal tool, just kind of slowly working it underneath this lip. So I'll continue all the way through it, all the way to the front, down up in there. But I did kind of pop this up a little bit to loosen it. And initially I fed the wire through there, runs down along that edge. And like I said, we'll continue to the front. But let's take the trim removal tool, slowly feed it in there, and then it'll be kind of like popped up in there. That's why you don't need to like zip tie or anything underneath here, because it ain't going anywhere. Front sill is super simple to run it along the bottom, just like the back. So just lift up on this, run it along the lip. If you need to, take your trim removal tool and shove it up underneath there. And then, following up along through here, by the hood popper guy, same exact process except there's one little tab right here, or one little plastic guy that is all the way right here. Pull it off with your trim removal tool and then that actually loosens this panel up to make it so much simpler to route the wire down through there. At this point, we're going to remove the old peak system. This is super easy. Pull off the suction cup. There's that removed. This is just the aux cord. So now what we have to do is remove the trim panel here. To get to the radio, the four Phillips screws. Take out the radio, hook in the harness, hook up the 12 volt ignition source, and connect the yellow video RCA cable. I removed the radio to make this simpler to see what I'm doing, but the antenna to detach it if you have to remove the radio, push down this little white tab, real simple, pops off. If you have XM, this is the antenna for that. Just push down on this little yellow tab, that'll pull right off. And then this radio wire or connector, push on that guy, pull out, and that releases. And this one was actually for that trim panel that we already removed. It's going to be very difficult to see how I fed the wires up through here, but you might be able to see the tails of the zip ties and kind of see the path that I followed, but I basically went up through this kick panel, the lever is right there, up through here, around the OBD port and behind there, and there's a, a wiring harness that pretty much just followed that up through. This big old hole in the dash, bottom left there. There we go. Fed it right through there. So where that light's coming from is by where the pedals are. But I followed that harness through up through there, and then have it coming through right there, the left back left corner of the radio. So now. What we're going to have to do is figure out what wire right here, the pink or the green, is for the keyed 12 volt source and hook into this harness. 
So real quick, an easy way of testing which wire is the 12 volt source because there is two different colored wires. There's a pink and a green. And logically speaking, I would say the darker wire, the green one is going to be the ground. But to eliminate any guessing out of this, I took a test light. So this alligator clip that's on the end of it, I have it running all the way directly to the battery. And it's hooked up to the negative side. So anytime this tip touches a positive source, the light internally will light up. So because it's real tight on space, I have another alligator clip running all the way to here, connecting into the back of the cigarette lighter, and it's actually uh, going right into the connector because I didn't want to cut any wires just yet until I verified what was the keyed ignition source. So I have the wire going in behind, touching the pink wire back in there. So in theory, once I turn the key, this light should turn on. So here we go. Yep. Turn the key off. Do it one more time. All right, cool. So what that means is the pink wire is indeed the key 12 volt source that we'll need to be tapping into to make this backup camera work. On to the next step. So what I ended up doing there was instead of cutting this original pink wire, I took my wire strippers and separated the uh, casing a little bit. It just with the wire strippers, it splits the casing and it doesn't break the copper contacts. Because uh, if you just obviously, you know, come in with wire snips, you snip this, then you have three separate wires. It's just so much easier. So I stretched the casing, split it, released the bare copper and the pink wire. Then I took our red wire that we have to hook up from the backup camera kit wrapped it around like a candy cane the copper ends and soldered it all together so now we have a nice strong T. Downside of doing this method is you can't get shrink tubing on here but you know nothing electrical tape can't uh, be put on there to protect it so now all we have to do is put some electrical tape on here plug everything back up for the radio and the backup camera install the T-harness stuff everything back in here and we are pretty much good to go. Now we have this wire wrapped up with electrical tape. We have any excess wire zip tied to the original connector right here. So now we are on to reattaching the radio, putting the trim pieces back on, and we're pretty much good. Here's the T-harness from the kit, and the female end does not get plugged into anything. So the male end goes in behind right next to the gray connector. Push it in, make sure it's nice and secure, and then the most important part, make sure yellow video RCA cable gets plugged in to the other one and there you have it so I'm gonna wrap a little electrical tape around here so it doesn't wiggle apart
And after you're done with the install, don't forget to take the little protective guy off the camera. So now everything's installed, but there is one final step. And the reason there's one more step is because when you throw it in reverse, guess what? The radio still doesn't do anything. Unfortunately, you have to get it programmed, but it's no big deal. Let me take you along. I've been talking and begging. 